Okay, this is the beginning of today's video, and I'll be starting with the feature ring. And this is only part of it because I, this is a piece of zebra wood, and that's how long the board was. I'll need about three and a half times that. So I'll be gluing four sections like this, but we'll just show one of them being glued together. So we have the zebra wood, we have a piece of padauk, this is wenge, another padauk, and then we have the zebra wood, and that's what the board will look like. Let's go ahead and get this glued together. So I've got all four pieces cleaned up to the same thickness. Now it's time to go ahead and cut a 15 degree angle on this. That's what I decided that I wanted for the chevron. I adjusted it at different angles. I like the 15 on this particular piece. Okay, it's time to glue them together, and I want to flip one of each of these sets just to give it that chevron look, like so. Right now I need to flatten this end off, so I'll do that to all of them, and when that's done, we'll flip the piece this direction and cut it. I'll show you a little bit of this, but each one of these will be exactly the same. Okay, I'll show you a little bit of this next step. I've got one end flattened off. I need to remove the rooftop, make it parallel to this piece. I've adjusted the stop on here to do that, so I'll go ahead and show you a few of those cuts. But again, they all look totally identical. Alright, these are almost segments now. The only thing I need to do is cut a 15 degree angle on the ends of them. This is what I like to do to set my angle. I've got a digital angle finder. I've got it zeroed. Get it on the blade, like so. And I'll just tilt the blade until it says 75 exactly. All right, there it is at 75, which is a 15 degree tilt. And that's what we get on each side of those segments. So let me get the sled set up and we'll cut a few. I have this little sled set up to cut the 15 degree angle on each side of those to make them a segment got a stop right here and my cuts will leave just a little bit uncut on the top so I have a good line to index it to that way I can just cut this and flip it and it should be a totally equal cut. Let's go ahead and cut a few of these.
All right, I've got the angle cut on both sides. It's time for a dry fit. All right, we got lucky again. They fit just right. Both sides. The thing of it is, using that digital angle finder, I don't really consider it luck. And these things are very accurate. As long as you have your boards clamped down tight, cut the same on each cut, you can get them to come out like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue them together. I put a line around that top because I don't want one of these chevrons to be upside down and I don't have a line on that side. So we'll just go ahead and get glue on some of them, stack them up, and then we'll get them together. I'm going to wait on that. My plan is to use this to start with, then I want to switch it with some of the uh, big hose clamps because I need to be able to adjust the joints if needed and I can't see the joints with this in the way. Push that down. So that's held that. Now I can put this on here. I'm going to cinch it up. Okay, I'll let that sit all night and uh, work on it tomorrow. Right now I'm cutting quite a few segments to make the rings that go on this bowl. Some of the segments will be Sepali and some will be Paduk. If you look close, you can see I have a line marked down each one of these strips. I'll tell you why I do that here in a second. All right, I have quite a few rings to glue up. I'll show you a little bit, but I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch every one of these. So I want to talk about that pencil line on top of those segments. That is very important and a lot of people are not sure why that's on there. But when you're cutting on a wedgie sled, one side of the segment is cut on one side of the blade, the other side is cut on the opposite side. So if for some reason your blade is not perfectly 90, you have a complementary angle and the segments will fit together perfect. So that's why you want that line on there. Alright, last one. All the rings are ready to glue into place. Uh, this is the base and it's got a tenon hot glue to it. That's what I'll be turning it off of. And this is the first ring that goes on the base. I've got that in my coal jaws just to help locate it. Go ahead and get some glue on this and we'll get it clamped up and we'll just keep going. Okay, that looks good. Let that sit for a few hours and I'll come back and true this up and glue the next ring on. Okay, this is a Paduke ring that's extra wide because I want to get two rings out of it. I'll glue it on here, make it round, and then I'll part it off, leave a piece on here, and this will be used a little bit later.
looks pretty good. All right, that's all I can do today. It's getting late in the day. I want to let that ring sit all night, and maybe I can get the rest of it glued up tomorrow. Okay, you can see I have the feature ring ready to be glued on here. I just got this nice and flat. Go ahead and get some glue on it. Probably be running the heater now for a while. It's starting to get a little bit nippy around here. They line up pretty good. I'll tighten that up and let it sit for a few hours. All right, right here I'm gluing the second paduk ring on, and the next one will be the top ring, which is made out of sepali. All right, this has been sitting all night. I'm going to go ahead and round up some of these segments and then start putting a shape on this base here because I have to establish my wall thickness before I do anything on the inside. Use a half inch pole gouge about 800 RPM. Okay, I'm going to go over this area with a negative rig scraper, get it cleaned up, and we'll move on to this area right here. All right, this is actually pretty smooth, but a couple of areas I'm going to go over with a negative rig scraper. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up and we'll cut the inside. I don't think this is the final shape I want here though. All right, I just need to blend this together and the inside of the feature ring blended into the bottom area which I've turned most of already. And I've got my uh, steady rest on here. That, that took care of that, and this I'll use the scraper on. Okay, I think I got it. I had a one joint here that hadn't been cleaned up yet, but it is, and now it's ready to sand, so I won't do that now because it's late in the day. I'll get back on it tomorrow morning and start sanding. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sand this, 
and I'll use my two inch disc to start with and I'll do the bottom using 80 grit then I'll switch to 120 because this is pretty nice here and work my way through 400 and I probably won't show you the outside it'll look just about like what we're doing here lathe's going 400 RPM going forward Okay, that got rid of that little area here. And actually, down in here, I might just use sheets like this. I like to do that where I have a contour like this. It, it just feels like I can keep that shape without uh, changing it. So uh, I'll get this sanded up and we'll be back and get some finish on it. Okay, I'm ready to put some finish on it and generally when I have paduk up against another wood I like to spray a light dusting of lacquer on there to seal any oils. I had one of these squares left and I tested it using wipe on poly and I think it's going to work. So that's what we're going to use. I have Minwax Wipe on Poly. And it's too late now, I just did it. I don't see any bleeding. So here's another option, I guess. Although up against maple, I'm not sure. I think I like that. Well, I know I like it. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. And it looked just like that on all the coats, including on the inside. For now, that's, that's good. I'm going to let it sit all night. Make sure everything looks good, and then we'll put the rest of it on. So I've got five thin coats of the Wipe-On Poly on this, and I just sort of tested it with the white Scotch-Brite, and I think that's where I'm going to stop. And I'll just show you what I did. It was really shiny anyway, so I just want to make sure that there's no streaks or anything in it, which it didn't seem like there was. So I'm going to go with that finish right there. I like that a lot. I've already done the inside. I think it's easier for you to see everything on the outside. So now we're going to get this off, lay it down, and I'll show you how I get that hot glued tenon off of there. I used that little acid brush to get denatured alcohol around the perimeter of that hot glue. I let it sit for about five minutes. I then checked a couple spots and I could see it was getting really close. Once it seems like it's coming loose, and if you have as much on there as I do, you could tilt this up and let some get down underneath it like this. And once I get one big area loose, it's going to come right off. And that right there, that whole ring is coming loose. And there it is. It's off. I think the trick is being able to get some underneath it. Now this is not finished anyway, so I wasn't worried about that. I'll get this sanded up and get a finish on it, and I'll come back and show you what we have. Well, here it is. It is all done, and I am very happy with how it turned out. It's about 10 inches in diameter, and it's four and a quarter tall. And the walls are about three-eighths of an inch. That feature ring is made from zebra wood. And then there's a piece of wenge in the middle. And then there's paduk bordering that. And there's paduk above and below the zebra wood. 
and the rest of the bowl is made from the sapile. And that is a beautiful wood. I made it with 12 segments per row, but of course the feature ring, the way I made it, there's 24 pieces to do that. It's finished with Minwax Wipe on Poly, and I used the satin on it. And I buffed the bowl out with the white Scotch Brite. After removing that tenon, I sanded the bottom, and I used uh, the Wipe on Poly on that, and then I buffed it out with X Abrasive Paste and Polish. And that turned out really nice. Speaking of the bottom, I always strive to have all of my segments meet in the middle and this one came out pretty much perfect. Same thing on the inside. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's got a quite unique look. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment, I read them all, and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple, and some are complex, so let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.